Hello, I'm Seamus Dunahoo of EVE University, and this is episode 25 of How to Survive EVE Online. Uh, before we go on to the next step of the military chain, uh, the agent gave us a new kind of frigate, an Atron, as a reward for the last mission. We're going to switch into that frigate. The reason is, if we show info on the Navitas, it is primarily a mining vessel. Uh, it, you have the Galente Frigate skill, which allows you to just get into a Navitas, but you also get bonuses based on that skill. A 5% bonus to cargo capacity, and a 20% bonus to mining laser yields per skill level. So, mining lasers will work better on a Navitas than they will on most other kinds of ships. Additionally, this has a 60% reduction to the capacitor need for mining lasers. If you right-click the Atron and show info, its bonus, based on the Galente Frigate skill, is that it has a 10% bonus to small hybrid turret fall-off range and 5% bonus to small hybrid turret damage per skill level. This is more suited for combat. So, let's take all the combat stuff off of our Navitas, click the Strip button. Yes, we don't want to remove all modules from the ship. Right-click the Atron, assemble ship, right-click the Atron again, make active, right-click it again, change the name to Atron, so we only have the name of the ship. Uh, you don't have your own name inside the ship's name. And there's our Atron floating in the station hangar. And we are going to attach our weapons to it. So, the... Small armor repair, one mega newton afterburner one, and the overdrive injector, and I could throw the light electron blasters on. If I do that and I show info, the light electron blasters will have their fall off increase to 1,950 meters. The optimal says 1,000, but that's only because I didn't throw in the antimatter charges yet. If I throw in the antimatter charges and show info on the module again, it will now save 500 meters. I don't feel like using this weapon, so I'm going to remove it. Our agent gave us something called a 75mm Gatling Rail 1. If you right-click and show info on this... It's got a much lower tracking speed, only 0.13 radians per second. That's about one-third the tracking speed of the blasters we've been using. But, they've got an accuracy falloff of 3 kilometers and an optimal of 6 kilometers before you throw in ammunition. Um, so let's... but we only have one of these. Let's right-click, view market details. I'm going to buy another one of these cheapest in station. Uh, yes, it's a little bit pricey, but I'm only buying one of them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag these weapons onto the ship. Shift, click, and drag to group them. Let's double click my Atron, double click the Navitas. I like to have my ship cargo holes in the same place. Uh, oh, by the way, what I did was I click and drag the title bar of one cargo hold onto the other. That merely makes it into tabs just so that they're, they take up the same screen real estate. And I'm just going to drag these antimatter charges over to my Atron, close the Navitas cargo hold. Let's see, let me get all my antimatter charges in one place. There we go, that's better. All right, and showing info on my module again, I've got an optimal of three kilometers, a fall off of 3,900 meters. This gives me more range, so my weapons will work effectively out to about 7 kilometers, provided, of course, that I can maintain the angular velocity low enough. So, let's close this, close this, and let's talk to the agent. He wants us to destroy some pirates and retrieve some secret documents, and he will give us, as a reward, two units of the gun I just had you buy. You can either go ahead and use the blasters. I'm going to use the railguns anyway. Doesn't matter too much to my wallet. 
because I'm up to 1.6 million isk. This was a 15,000 isk weapon. Click accept. And, oh, by the way, he's going to give us, as a reward, a unit of propulsion jamming as well. So the game's going to talk to you about stasis webifiers. Uh, you know what? Yeah. Uh, look for that skill book. Where did he put it? Oh, that's right. He's going to give it to us as a reward. All right, let's undock. We are in space. Right-click empty space. Cash flow for capsuleers. Encounter dead space. Warp to location. Warp drive. So I've got my rail guns, my afterburner, my armor repair, and an overdrive injector system. Uh, looking at the fitting window, I am not anywhere near cap stable with all modules running, so I should still only turn on each module as I need it. Uh, my afterburner uses 20 gigajoules every 11 seconds, so that's about 2 gigajoules a second. All right. Right click the nearest enemies. Let's zoom out the camera, figure out where they are. And I will approach them. And I will also hit the afterburner. Now that is a Weber drone. You may have noticed this new icon in the upper right corner of your overview. This Weber drone is using a stasis webifier on me. He's limiting my speed. So even with my afterburner, I'm only pushing 214 meters per second. It's not a whole lot. But I've destroyed him, so that problem's been taken care of. Now, let me move away from these Corelli initiates. This nearest Corelli initiate is moving around me somewhat quickly. He's almost matching my tracking speed. That's not going to be good. But by running away from him, that forces him to reduce his angular velocity on me. Which means I can hit him. No, that's not the target I wanted to shoot at. Control spacebar, since I want to let them get a little bit closer. And fire. Now, I can right-click the orbit button. Let me set a default orbit distance of 6,000 meters. Left-click an enemy, and orbit. I know my weapons will work out to about 7 kilometers, so I'm sitting in orbit slightly smaller. And by orbiting an enemy, I make myself difficult to hit. Turrets miss for two general reasons. Either the target is too far away, or the target is moving around the shooter too quickly. That is exceeding the angular velocity. Uh, that is, ex the angular velocity exceeds the tracking speed. But, uh, as long as I can keep the enemy within 7 kilometers and below 1 point, uh, 0 0.13 uh, radians per second, I'm in good shape. Now, running away from the enemy is one way to force them to reduce the angular velocity. Getting right in their face if they are just using a standard orbit command is another way to do it. Uh, we're supposed to pick up something. It's probably in that cargo container. So let's approach the cargo container, open the cargo hold. All right, I think we're close enough. Turn off the afterburner. Open the cargo container, grab the secret documents, and right-click bookmark location because I am going to come back here and salvage afterwards. But for now, let's dock up in station. Warp drive active. Control R to reload the weapons. 
Now keep in mind, NPCs, if you get too close, if you can stay too close to them, will be dumb enough to proceed directly away from you to try and open the range before resuming their orbit. If you're fighting another player, they might try to do something smart in order to open up the distance. They might go right off in a right angle or right behind you. NPCs tend to be predictable. Players are not. Docking request accepted. Right click the agent, start conversation. Everything screen check marks, so go ahead and complete the mission. And let's right click propulsion jamming and train that now to level one as well. Yes, we will switch training. Uh, before I end the episode, uh, it's worth noting that at the end of the military chain, the agent is going to give you a, a Tristan class Galente frigate. Uh, I've mentioned this about fitting before, and let me show this a little more explicitly. Our Atron frigate has no missile hardpoints and two turret hardpoints. You can see the two dots lit up here now that I have no turrets. I load the turrets in, those hard points become occupied. The Tristan class Galente frigate, which you're going to get at the end of this chain, or at least in preparation for the 10th step of this chain, is going to have two turret and two missile hard points. So if you are playing Galente, I would like you to get missile launcher operation. Buy a copy, the cheapest copy in station. Get standard missiles, plural, left click, get the cheapest copy and station. You'll know you have the correct item if both of those look like skill, uh, like look like book icons. Uh, inject missile launcher operation. I believe standard missiles has missile launcher operation level 2, yes, as a requirement, so you can't inject that right away. So, open up your skill queue, you will put in missile launcher operation. You know what? You don't need propulsion jamming right away. Get missile launcher operation up to level 2, and when you can, standard missiles up to level 1. In the, uh, in the next episode, we will take on... Oh, hit apply. In the next episode, we will take on the next step of the military chain. In the meantime, thank you for watching.